Hello, everybody. Father Jim here. Hope you're doing well. It's Holy Saturday. And throughout the whole day, it's a day of just waiting and, of course, vigil. And then, of course, in the evening, we gather for the most important liturgy in the entire church year, the Easter Vigil. It's a long, beautiful Mass. So I'm just going to read from the Gospel. And, of course, the Gospel that's proclaimed on Holy Saturday evening is the first Gospel of the, of the Easter, of the resurrection of our Lord. And so we turn to St. Mark, chapter 16. And when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe. They were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Go and tell his disciples and Peter. He's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. Yes, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. This evening on this most holy night, we rejoice at Christ's resurrection from the dead. Christ breaks the prison bars of death, sets captives free, reconciles us with the Father. This evening is a night of great rejoicing. It's a night of hope. It is a night of coming to truly realize that Christ Jesus is he who says he is, and he will do what he says that he will do. He rose from the dead as he promised, and he gives us all new life. The resurrection is both an event in human history, and also an event not subject to time. The Logos, the Word of God, the second person of the Trinity, became incarnate to rescue us from the bondage of sin and death. Jesus himself became sin who knew no sin. He took on all the sin of the past, present, and future. He destroyed it so that it no longer has dominion over us or holds us captive. He truly set us free from Satan. And in being raised from the dead, he has conquered death. By virtue of our baptism, we're then grafted onto Christ so that we too witness to the resurrection. We encounter the risen Christ in the Eucharist, and at an appointed time, we will be raised with him to everlasting life. Imagine for a moment that we're journeying to that tomb that first Easter Sunday morning with Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome. What would our thoughts have been? Would we have been eager to see if what he said would actually be true? Or would we have been doubting? We can all go through moments of doubt or even wondering if God will fulfill his promises. The gospel I just read to you reminds us that God does fulfill his promises. He will never abandon us. Jesus continually provides moments of rising to new life in our lives. He is continuously setting us free from sin through the sacrament of reconciliation, reigniting our strength with reception of the Holy Eucharist and speaking to us through his word. So as we begin this beautiful holy season of Easter, let's ask for the grace to fall more in love with the resurrected Jesus in the Eucharist. Let's ask him to continuously reveal himself to us, that every time we receive him, we recognize that we are tasting just a little bit of heaven. Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a blessed Easter, everyone. God bless you. Take care.